Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to sort out all the front suspension problems with the Audi TT. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you the parts that we're going to need. So guys, if you want to follow along with me at home, you're going to need some spanners, some sockets, a breaker bar, a chisel, a ratchet, some copper grease, a hammer, some spring compressors, a wire brush, some allen key sockets, a vice grip, and a blowtorch. Okay, so these are the parts we're going to need. So, I have a new wishbone, and it's polyurethane bushes. Didn't get this in polyurethane, I just got this in rubber, but this is the top mount, and the bearing to go with it, and then the bottom ball joint. Said, when I'm in this far, doing all of this anyway, I may as well just change the ball joint. Doesn't need to be done, but it's better off to have it done now, than to be redoing it later on. So this is my top mount, so it's definitely gone and uh, needs to be replaced. So how do you know when they're gone? Well, they're going to be at all funny angles. So they're going to be like either pointed up or you can get a, like a finger underneath them. Uh, I have this one loosened, but you can get the general idea that there's going to be loads of play underneath it. Or if you have a look at the better one, which I've just replaced. And uh, again, we just take off the cap so I can show you that they're all the exact same. You see there's absolutely nothing underneath it. So you can't even get your finger underneath it. And uh, that's a brand new one, just gone. So I'm going to do the far side again. And um, yeah, when it's all tightened down, it's all bolted up, it should have no gap underneath. So obviously when this is tightened, uh, I have loosened this one, but um, when it is tightened up, there shouldn't be much of a gap. And this one, of course, there is. So well, it's bigger now that I've undone it, but I'm going to do it all the way now. Yeah, some people say you shouldn't use an impact to undo these, but um, they're so awkward to undo. I think you should do, use an impact, it's not going to make much difference anyway, because I think this down here is damaged anyway, it's worn out. So next thing is, now we've done doing that, because we're replacing some other things as well, it's just going to make more sense to also undo the big centre nut, which is a 17mm hex bolt. Okay, that's in. Now we get an extension bar and break open the seal and So now with the wheel removed We've undone the clip so it's one clip there for a brake sensor one for the ABS at this side the clip up here which holds both of them and this is the clip for the brake pipe this one here is a bit of W40 and it'll come out it does come out, just walk it out uh, the far side was easier, this seems to be a little bit more stuck but got it out anyway, just W40 and a bit of hammering got it out okay then I think you just pull it back ever so slightly And down. Okay. Great. On to the next job. Next, onto the ball joint for the steering. Pretty easy, just undo it. Okay, now that we're fully undone, wind it off. Wind it back on one or two treads so it's been held. Now we have to release the ball joint from the hub. So we get the hammer. And we give it just a bit of a whack. Now you can get forks that go in here. And um, yeah, I haven't had an awful lot of luck with them. They tend to rip the ball joint. Now if the ball joint is bent, it doesn't really matter. But um, I like to give them a whack and they should drop down. Next we're going to take off the brake caliper and get it out of the way. Just an ordinary one of these. They fit in there. Okay. 
Good to see that someone used copper grease. Nice and handy to get off. So next we're going to lever the brake caliper off and um, get out of the way. So next. Okay, so after a little bit of a struggle, that's to this brake caliper now off. I'm gonna leave that on the ground. It's grand, it's, there's no stress, it's not up. Like if it's on a jack or on a lift, it'd be hanging down, but sitting on the ground, it's not gonna affect it. Okay, take off these brakes. There's actually loads of meat on them. That's great. Okay, next job, next part. So next up is to remove the bottom anti-roll bar uh, joint. So that's that one. It's still connected at the top, but it doesn't matter for the moment. This one here is the important one and it's easier to get at. Okay guys, so now we're underneath the car and we're looking at the wishbone. And the bush just in here. I probably should have had the wheel on, but that's the bush up there. That's for the uh, wishbone and the bush here. There's all hairline cracks all over it. And um, yeah, it's just gonna fail the test anyway. Um, I don't know about the other one, but sure, they're, if one's bad, their uh, well, joints are bad. I've already done this one. So there's poly bush in this one, but this one was equally as bad. There was hairline cracks all over it. And uh, it was just gone weak. So yeah, now to take out this one. Start this one, that one, and then swing it around. Take out that. Don't forget to take off this. This is for your headlight leveling sensor. So it's like another little anti-roll bar bush or anti-roll bar arm. And um, of course mine had to snap, so I'll have to extract that bolt, which sucks. I hate doing that. Okay. Okay, just I'm doing the bottom ball joint uh, nuts. There are 16s, so that's that off. Okay, nice and loose. Okay, on to the next one up here. Okay, guys, you joined me halfway through, so I've pulled it down, stuck it underneath them. This one here is now coming out. I just twist it around. Come on. There we go. And it's out. So that's that out. There's two 18s up there, either side. There's one 18 up there, and there's 16s. And now to undo the top nut. Okay, now with the bottom ball joint nut removed, or nearly fully removed, take a hammer and give it a whack. Drops it down, and that's that one done. Okay, now up to the top. Okay, so I have the drive shaft out of the center now gone. That's the drive shaft come out. So it's still all hanging, it's hanging off that nut there. So obviously when you wind it out, you put it in a few treads, otherwise it'll fall down on top of you. So now we're going to wind it out and remove the whole assembly. Great. And now it's fully removed. And here's the hub and the spring. So why didn't I just use the spring compressors and compress both sides? Um, I've seen other videos where you just compress both sides and you're able to pop the top mount off and put a new top mount on without having to take all of this out. It's not a big job. It's basically just Knock out the center here, take off the brakes, and basically you the thing done. And so I'm changing the ball joint anyway. Um, it just made more sense to take it off, but I kind of already knew what I was doing. This had to come out because, there we go. That's the spring from the top of this bit here that snapped off. And um, it was actually on the dust guard that goes around this. It was actually wrapped around it. So, how I knew this was broken was when you go onto full lock, either direction, nearly approaching full lock, you could hear it kind of like binding and then a sudden big ping as all the pressure would be released. And it did take me a while to kind of figure out what it was. I had suspicions that it was either a control arm or something like that, or else, since this car doesn't have control arms, it must be the spring. And of course it was. It was the spring all along. So, like we bought new springs. Well, they're new second-hand ones. I figured these ones are of another car, but there's very low mileage. There's less than 100,000 actually on these springs. A little bit rusted, but they're actually perfect. And so I've got spring and a dampener, so I'm just going to replace the whole lot. So with the new dampener, I'm going to test it. These are hydraulic dampeners, I think they're called. They're not gas-filled struts. 
So when you push them down, well, there's plenty of resistance there now. They keep going, say, for halfway. They don't come back up. So on gas filled struts, these would be bet, but on hydraulic or oil filled struts, they're just resisting direction, but they're not gas filled, so they won't come back up. And if I hang it, so it's not hang hanging on the ground, it takes a long time for, well, this one doesn't want to move at all. But um, yeah, on the one that was bet, uh, it would literally just fall back down. So that's how I knew uh, this one's a good one. Okay guys, so I have the two struts. One is bad and one is good. Uh, I won't show you which one's which, but um, I'm going to compress them both now. And we'll see which one collapses first. I think it's a bit obvious which one is the bad one. This one has bottomed out. This one still has a bit more to go. So that's the good one. And uh, now we're going to lift them up and see if gravity can extend them. So, yeah, it's pretty much obvious that uh, this is the bad one. And this is the good one. So it still hasn't even expanded yet. <laughs> it's quite stiff, actually. Oh, my hand is getting sore. Okay. So that's it now, fully extended again. And even um, what the other test that you can do is just leave them standing upright. And they will, of course, compress a bit because gravity is gonna pull them down. But the bad one is gonna have less resistance and it'll just end up nearly fully uh, com compressed. Where the good one will probably will go down about halfway and then stop. So both the speed and actually how they actually sit over time that's how you know a good one from a bad strut. Okay, let's get this one now installed into the car. Okay, now to release this nut. So, round it out. I think they're 18 either side. Get the W40, don't be afraid of it. Whether either side, doesn't matter if you hit the brake disc because you're gonna clean it off with brake fluid or brake cleaner anyway. And uh, then we get the hammer. Walk the hammer, walk the bolt back and forth. Now it's going to W40. Nice and loose. Now we just undo it and then hit it out and then we'll work on getting the strut out. Okay, next we're going to get all of this out. You can see I've already made a bit of progress. The way I did it was I got the chisel and just pushed it in there. And you could actually see the, the crack opening. Loads of W40 then smeared it all into it as much as I could and um, so you just keep opening up the joint like that and just give it a little tap and out it comes so I reposition that chisel again Of course, this is the one we're replacing, so even if we damage it, it's not the end of the world. Right, now we're going to clean this really well, the inside of this. We're just going to clean this right really well. Get rid of any dirt covered in uh, WD-40 or else in copper grease. So when we tap it back in, it'll go in nice and easy. Okay, so I have loads of WD-40 on it, copper grease and WD-40 in there as well. And uh, we're going to reassemble now with the new strut. So this bit here has to be lined up. This, that hole there, lines up with this hole here. And there's a lip just in here. And that's how far it has to go down. Obviously it has to keep going down until this circle here lines up with this circle here. So I have the chisel in it. That just opens up the jaw ever so slightly. And you can kind of maneuver it in. And once we keep it fairly square going in, it actually nearly pushes in. You just give it a little tap with the hammer just back up here and it'll actually just slide in. Now you don't have to like wallop it or anything, just barely a little tap and it'll actually just suck all the way in. So um, 
Yeah, I bet you that. I can't do it with one hand. So I have to hold it with one hand and hit it with the other, but or guide it in. So um, yeah, come back and I'll have it done. Okay guys, so that's it now. Push all the way back in. I'm gonna try the bolt. It goes all the way in, perfect. Guys, so when you get your spring, make sure it sits back into the little seat. There's a little stopper just down there. That's the spring on with the compressors on it. And uh, they pull it, squeeze it down enough that you're able to get the cap on, the bearing, for the top mount and the nut. And once you get the nut in, then you can start playing on the rest of the assembly. So that's the that's the bottom, that's the top of the top mount. That goes in there. There's a cap which goes on top of that, and then a nut, and that's all that holds all of that in to the top of the car. So let me just get the nut in there. This is now hanging, and basically it's uh, put everything back together in reverse order. I still have to get a new wishbone put in. But um, so just before I install the poly bush wishbones, um, I've been told they squeak. So to hopefully get rid of that, I put loads of grease. So there's grease all in the center. I hit out the pin and covered as much as I could in grease. And I'm going to hit in the, the pin now, and uh, hopefully that'll keep any squeaks at bay. Um, don't know how else the sup squeaks, or maybe that's just what poly bushes do. But um, I never had poly bushes before, but that's what everyone says, they squeak like mad. So hopefully this will fix it. Okay, now to be installed. So that's one in there. And I'm going to go under the car and just pull it around this way. Now with the wishbone attached, next thing on the list is for the new ball joint to go in. So it just goes in like that. And then this nut goes in the top of there. And uh, I'll come back to you when it's all tightened up. Okay, now it's all attached. Now it's only a matter of pushing this in first, then getting this back into the, all the holes. Well, that was one awful job to do. So I now have the wishbone attached to the ball joint at the bottom here. So it's all in. I have that one there. Nearly, now it's done. So the way I had to do it was pull it down as far as I could. Got a big bar from here coming out towards the camera and uh, basically just pushed down really far in it and then just snuck in the the bolts here into it. So with the poly bush, um, yeah, it's stiffer suspension, but it also means putting it back together is a little bit more difficult. So that's the old bush there. And um, you can kind of see all the cracks. You can see all the cracks here in it. And uh, yeah, it's just not in great condition. There's a rip in it there as well. So that's why this one had to come out. Um, my original plan was to push the old bushes out push new ones in, put the arm back in, run original suspension. But uh, when my brother found me these poly bushes and they were going so cheap, um, it's more of a novelty just to try it out. I'm not 100% sure whether I actually like them or not, but uh, for the moment they're in and they're not coming back out. So yeah, making great progress. Okay, um, not really sure what the next job, probably the anti-roll bar. Or the brakes, probably the anti roll bar. No, probably maybe, maybe they do the brakes next and then work on the anti roll bar. Okay, well, guys, this didn't turn out too well. I snapped the bolt on the headlight leveling sensor, or I think that's a headlight leveling sensor. Tiny little arm it goes up there and goes up and down and does whatever it has to do. So, where it joins in is this little hole here on the wishbone, and of course, the bolt has sheared perfectly off. 
Now there's enough there just to use a vice grip to uh, catch, but it's not going to move. How do I solve problems like this? I will use the blowtorch. So what I'm going to do is just redden it and um, then wind it out. Okay, you can see that it's gone red. And uh, just gonna leave it now a second, then grab the vice grip and slowly wind it out. Now, you see that there? It's now moving. And we just keep doing this. And whatever rust and everything, all the other crap that's in there is just going to break up. Okay, so you can see this is the nut that was uh, stuck. So it's absolutely freezing here at the moment, that's why I'm wearing a coat. Alright, we're going to get the vice grip and uh, wind it out. I'll let you come out by hand now. There we go, there we go. Okay. Huh. Easy as that. So now all I have to do is just get another nut with that same tread and um, yeah, that'll be that bit then finished. Okay, that's now the tie rod back in. The anti-roll bar drop link, boil them back in. And uh, yeah, if anyone wants to comment in the comments below, is that meant to have a bend in it or is it meant to be straight? Um, I don't know which one it's meant to be, but uh, comment down below if you know. Uh, I still have to get a nut and bolt for the other half of it, so that's why it's not connected just yet. But I think, also comment yeah if you know what it is for. I think it's for the headlight living sensor. Could be wrong, but that's what I think it is. Um, yeah, I don't know any of the, the torque specs, but uh, I'm gonna give it about six ugga uggas on that. And uh, yeah, everything else is ready to go. I'm going to tighten that when the wheel is back on to give me enough resistance. And uh, yeah, very happy. So I've the spring fixed again. That was broken. Uh, I put the same spring. I bought two secondhand springs. Put four green dots, two brown dots on the far side as well. Um, don't know what the dots mean. I know they're something to compression. But uh, the ones I took out were pink, were four light pink dots and two dark pink dots. So um, yeah, comment below if you know what if this is the right one or wrong one. So it's a BAM engine with AC. Um, I suppose like you get different colors if you don't have AC and if you don't have Quattro and all the other stuff. So this is a Quattro BAM with AC. Okay, um, yeah, everything's back on. I didn't show it in the video putting it back on, but it's not super really exciting. It's literally just me turning spanners. So yeah, okay, get the wheel back on and uh, See how it looks. So I now have the new top mantle tightened up. You can see there's no gap underneath there, and same with the other side. So that's how you know a good top mount from a bad top mount. So they're all done now, and I think the car is finished. Hey guys, thanks very much for watching. That's now the TT all finished. Uh, join me in the next video where I actually learn to set the camber on this car, and um, yeah, it's coming on really well. So. Just want to say a really big thank you to everyone that is subscribing and if you haven't already please do subscribe. Big thank you to the Audi TT forum on Facebook. You're a great bunch of lads always there to answer questions and to everyone on Autostad in Ireland. Thanks very much for all the lovely comments and uh, all the support and uh, people that have subscribed. It means a lot so I'm really trying to grow this channel and um, the, the crowd project hasn't stopped. This is just going to be my daily driver and it just has to be done. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. Support me in PayPal in that link below. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.